Hey guys, welcome to another Lost Ark video. In today's video, we will be talking about one of the most important things you should be doing to progress your character in Tier 1, Tier 2, or even Tier 3. What I've noticed while playing Lost Ark is people are really hung up on hitting gear score thresholds. In some cases, so obsessed that they are even spending huge amounts of real cash to steamroll it even more quickly. The reason I think they are doing this, at least in my conversations and observations I've made, is because they find themselves not knowing what to do to progress their character any further once they've done their Guardian Raids and Chaos Dungeons and have exhausted the materials they've gained doing those activities. Obviously, gear is important to your overall progress of your character and increasing your gear score is going to be your primary objective. As you progress further, you're going to find that this becomes a lot more difficult not only in terms of the acquisition of materials, but also in the ramping of difficulty of the content you'll face to get those materials. And this brings us to why I wanted to make this video. I've been getting the feeling that a lot of players, especially the newer ones, are overlooking some of the important aspects to character progression that are just as important as gear score in terms of your character's overall strength. One of these things you should not overlook and start on right away even before hitting level 50 is skill point potions. A lot of people who I've talked to all say the same thing. They rush their gear score focusing on nothing else simply pushing their gear score by any means to late tier 2, or in some cases even tier 3, quickly only to say, I feel so weak, why? An important reason why could be that you are running your character in groups with other people who have worked on their skill points, and you have not. Putting your character in an extreme disadvantage in comparison. The way your spells or abilities work depends heavily on a system in game called the tripod system, which I won't fully get into in this video. But I will talk about briefly just to shed light on why skill points are so very critical to the power progression of your character. Tripods are additional perks that are granted to your skills and abilities when you reach skill point spend thresholds. These perks can range from bonus stats, cooldown reductions, crit rate, crit damage increases, and in some cases even completely change how the skill functions. Each ability has three tiers of tripods. These tiers are reached when you have spent enough skill points into the skill. You will receive tripod perks at 4, 7, and 10 in the respective skills. The amount of skill points required to reach each of those thresholds are 4, 20, and 48 respectively. Now, this system has a lot more complex things to work on late game to optimize your character including skill runes and gear options when you reach late tier 3. But we won't get into that here. The important thing to understand for the purpose of this video and for your character early game is that you won't be able to even reach these breakpoints to even work with this system effectively until you have required skill points to do so. The gap between your base skill points and where you will want to be to optimize your character for that tier 3 content you are racing toward is huge, with the cap of potential skill points being 384 right now. So you can see with the resulting power increase from having the ability to have 8 level 10 abilities over the 5 you start with will result in a massive increase to your overall damage per second in battles. And even better, at 55 you unlock the ability to even potentially level some skills to 11, so you will want to have skill points available to spend as soon as possible. And as an added benefit, the skill potions apply to all your characters across your account, not only the one getting them, so that makes them even more important and why you need to be working on these between honing sessions. So now that we know how important these potions are to our account and our character progression, let's look at where we get them. There are 9 skill point potions that you can receive by doing quests. This will equal a total of 27 skill points. These quests include a light cast over the dark fields in Isla Terra, eggs in the sky in Annika, the hidden robber in Shushire, the stone of power in Serenity Isle, your awakening quest the sunset in Rohendel, the return trip in Rohendel. This quest requires that you complete the Una's task called repairing the seal site 7 times. You will want to do this anyway to complete your Rowandell Adventure Tome. Those buried in the Dark Ground in Phaeton. The Last Melody of a Requiem in Phaeton. And Eternal Love in Punica. You will also receive 4 skill point potions for completing the tower. You will get your first one in Shadespire after completing the 20th floor. Then you will receive your second in Shadespire also at the 50th floor. Then upon completing the 20th floor of the Fate Spire, you will receive another skill point potion and you will receive your final one at the 50th floor of the Fate Spire. You will also receive 4 skill point potions and 1 greater skill point potion for working on your Adventure Tome. You will receive one at 70% East Latura Adventure Tome completion, at 70% Rohendel Adventure Tome completion, at 50% Shushire Adventure Tome completion, 
and 60% North Vern Adventure Tome Completion. You will receive your Greater Skill Potion at 80% Punica Adventure Tome Completion. You will also receive a Skill Point Potion for completing the Una's task, Whispering Islet. This one will take a little longer though, because you will have to complete it 10 times in order to receive the Skill Point Potion. The majority of your Skill Point Potions will come from Collections. You will receive a Greater Skill Point Potion once you have collected 20 Island Tokens. You will receive 4 Skill Point Potions from Giant Heart Collections at 4, 6, 10, and 12. And then you will receive Greater Skill Point Potions from Ominous Stars. You will get your first one at 2 and your second one at 6 Ominous Stars collected. And you will receive a Greater Skill Point Potion upon completing 8 Adventure Tomes from the Ignea Tokens. The easiest ones to complete early will be the first three in the quests in East Latura, Annika, and Shushire. Alternatively, if you use your Power Pass to level a second character, you will receive those three quests for free, so you will receive those three skill point potions automatically. You will also receive the first greater skill point potion from Ominous Stars almost immediately upon completing Punica. You will receive Ominous Star 1 from the Punica quest Whispering Star, so that's easy because you will complete that while you're completing the island. If you decide to get Nia to Trusted, you will receive an Ominous Star. The easiest ones that I would choose would be the Anguished Isle Garden of Despair boss, because you're going to be doing that daily anyway. Stella has a chance of dropping an Ominous Star, so you put that together with your Whispering Star quest from Punica, and you should be able to get this Greater Skill Point potion very early. Well, for 8,000 Sun Coins, you can just purchase one star from the Spearfish Hunting Guide vessel. So although a few of the potions will be in reality out of your reach for some time, the huge amount you were able to weave into your farming and gathering in each tier will provide you with a massive power boost, which will make your grinding so, so much easier. Okay guys, I hope this has helped some of you understand that farming honing materials and getting your gear score number higher is not the only progression arc for your character. And by getting your skill points up, you will make a huge step in making your character ready for the content you are so badly trying to climb towards. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.